probably a series of coincidences. But the Home Office is kicking, and I'm handing the kicks on to you. I'm told we're indifferent, complacent, lax, and unimaginative. We never move until public opinion makes us, and then it's usually too late. And there's some truth in the accusation. Five insured persons have been found drowned in the last eight months, and not one of you has brought in a scrap of evidence as to who benefited, though all the claims, heavily underwritten, have been met. What can we do without a lead from the SO's office? They can't move without evidence. You'll have to work alone. Persuade where you can't command. Who's got E area? I have. Three of the five cases are yours. You'll have to go through your insurance companies with a fine tooth comb. Yes, sir. That's all. If, as I say, it is simply a series of coincidences, let me have something definite enough to publish. All right. Oh, uh, hold it. Yes, sir. The extradition of the man Grogan from America. He arrives the day after tomorrow. I've made my arrangements, sir. They think so much of your prodigy in America that they've sent a Lieutenant O'Reilly from the Chicago Police Department along with him. He'll be staying a while to study our antiquated methods. I'll attach him to you. Then he won't learn anything. Yes, sir. Extension 7, send me up a pot of tea. Dr. Muller, I can only be terribly grateful to you for this loan. I know you for an honest man, Stuart. I can read it in your eyes. So I trust you. You do know that in the event of my invention being accepted by the government, I'll be wealthy again. If you'd like me to sign a... Yes, you might do that. Or if you care to make over your life insurance to me. I'm not insured. But you should be. <laughs> That's the insurance broker speaking. The businessman. The most charitable man I know. And the greatest of these is charity. Yes. Now all I want you to do is to sign this simple note to pay me back the sum I'm so happy to lend you. You're a very good man, Dr. Rollo. I wanted to be Stuart. I wanted to devote my life to the healing of mankind. I wanted to be a doctor. But they got together, those narrow-minded, prejudiced medical men, to see how they can win. <laughs> Brilliant, but unbalanced. That was the verdict. And so, I serve the blind. You mean you... Here in Greenwich, uh, Mr. Dearborn, himself blind, runs a home for blind vagrants. If you would like to express your gratitude for the little things that I have done, send him a donation. Or better still, go and see his home yourself. And learn the joy of giving charity. I will. Here is the address. Call on him tomorrow evening. I let him know that you are coming. I most certainly will. Do. Goodbye. Goodbye. And thank you again. Grogan arrives the day after tomorrow under police escort. He will be allowed bail. Pay it. You're dumb blue, aren't you? Good luck to you.
Curtain, sir. Just in our evening papers. Uh, and open the window. I'm a detective inspector from Scotland Yard. How can I help you? Well, for certain purposes, we're making a check on all recently insured persons. May I ask you with what object? Oh, it's a formality concerning a case under investigation. They're asking the cooperation of all insurance companies within a certain area. Only two willing to help you, if I can. Thank you. May I see your books? Uh, certainly. You don't do a great deal of business. You have only very small connections, you know. Any particular name you are looking for? Yes, Ingo. Ah, yes. A sad case. Why Ingo should take his life? The verdict was found drowned. Was it? I had forgotten. Ingo was insured to 20,000 pounds. Who was the beneficiary? A woman, I think, not his wife. It was all quite in order. Where is she to be found? I can give you an address. But I have a notion she went abroad. I'd like it, please, together with a surrendered quality. Oh, certainly. Did you insure Miss Ursula Sable? Yes. Yes. She was found drowned, too, wasn't she? Yes. An extraordinary coincidence. Am I being suspected of a fault, play? No, Dr. Orloff. But in the public interest, cases like these must be investigated. Well, I appreciate that. Who benefited from the case of Miss Sable? I shall have to look that up. Romanian, I think. The policy was drawn up as a guarantee for money lent. And has Mr. Hasher returned to Romania? His last address was the Midland Hotel in Manchester. Well, thank you, Dr. Roller. Have you all the information you want? I wanted? may have to call on you again. I'm always willing to help. Thank you. Answer it, Jake.
over the earth, and neither was there night in the heavens, nor on the waters of the earth. The eyes of men were blinded because of their iniquities and the hardness of their hearts. So they remained for seven days that were seven nights, and voices of mankind arose lamenting. Give unto us a sign that we may see, for we repent our sins and will not trespass again. And on the seventh day the sun shone in the heavens, giving light on mountain and on valley, on river and the multitudinous sea. And they who were blind did see again. See Mr. Dearborn. Well, what's this? Mr. Stewart, I'm glad I'm here. Mr. Dearborn has been called away on an errand of mercy. The pleasure of showing you around will be mine. Come this way. Here's where they are across useful occupations. Dearborn believes that by contributing to their own key, they will preserve their independence and self-respect. See how nimbly they work. Their fingers are their eyes. To there are the kitchen and the dormitories. It's a splendid work. Something I'd like my daughter to see. Daughter? What daughter? I thought you had no relatives. Where is she now? On her way back from America. Will she live with you? I suppose so. For a while, anyhow. Well, look at that. Uh, where were we? Oh, yes, yes. I wanted to show you my special department upstairs, the medical clinic. It's odd, Mr. Stewart, isn't it? How life has compensated me. Compensated? Oh, yes. Uh, with the care of these school creatures. Roller would have done. <laughs> nice work, Flatfoot. Hey, uh, are you Holt? I'm O'Reilly, Chicago Police Department. Hello, how are you? No, I'm willing to kiss him. Okay, I'm sorry about that girl. Ah, uh, she'll get over it. Uh, here's your man, Grogan. Oh, I'm glad to have you back, Grogan. Yes, I'll bet you are. I'll give you a minute. Hey, wait a minute. I say, I really am awfully sorry. Is there anything I can do? No, thanks. I'm taking no more risks. Taxi? Oh, I say, wait a minute. Hey, you wait a minute. 
I've got it yet. I had it uh, somewhere. It's in your trouser pocket? Uh, you try. Hey, wait a minute. I know where it is. Where? The captain's got it back in Chicago. I could sock you right on the nose. I got a good mind to let you. Well, and who's supposed to be looking after you two? Oh, that's all right, officer. This is my way of being a joke. I'm Inspector Holt of Scotland Yard. Oh, and who's he supposed to be? Dr. Watson? Come on, now listen to me, will you? Uh, Give him and tell him who we are. You'll look pretty silly when I get back to the yard, Sergeant. I'll look pretty silly if you don't. You'll be missing a couple of them if you don't look after them a little bit better. I think your English police are wonderful. <laughs> You've done very well. I always said you'd go far. My only fear was how far. With the greatest difficulty, I've kept your lower fourth antics out of the public papers. Lieutenant O'Reilly, I have to inform you that the yard is a dour, soulless place of business, where hijinks, jitterbugs, and horseplay of the more imaginative kind are severely discouraged. I have a cigar, Commissioner. I don't smoke cigars. I understand that bail for the man Groban has been offered and will be accepted by court tomorrow. Do you want to hold him? No, sir, not as long as he's under observation. Very well. Yes, Mr. Commissioner. But, I see you, Holt. Hello? Yes, Holt speaking. Police emergency call coming through. Hello, River Police. You're through. What's the place? Sorry, old stair. All right, don't touch anything. Yes, I'm coming now. Yes, instantly. Exchange transfer me. I want transport M1. Another river case, sir. Holt speaking. I want a car at the front entrance in four minutes. In case he should forget to make a mess of it, you'd better go along with him. Yes, sir. Hey, me, Clash. Not a thing. Hey, what is this? Quick, Sam? Take a dredge for a couple of weeks to get in her. Hillingdon and Curtis. Name Henry Stewart. 142 Bellingham Mansion. Half a broken coupling. Mark A.J. You can't make a homicide case out of half a coupling. Ambulance is coming, sir. All right, having taken the mortuary, tell the doctor to run the rule over him. Yeah, yeah. Fenton, issue the usual notices and try and get him identified. You're taking a lot of trouble with this case. Well, perhaps I think it's worth it. Well, maybe I got a thing to learn. Maybe you have. That'll be all. You can cover him up now. What do you make of it, Doc? A well, simple case of drowning. Mucus spots about the nose and mouth. Water in the air passages and lungs. About a pint of it in the stomach. No marks of violence? None whatsoever. It ain't even murder, Class B. It's died of accident or suicide. How long has he been dead, Doctor? About three hours. Is the water you find in the stomach muddy? I haven't had time to analyze it yet. Oh, let me know when you do, will you? A relative just arrived, sir, to identify the body. Oh, you wait here, will you? Right. Do you remember me? I remember. What's happened to my father? There's been an accident. He's dead? Well, it may not be your father. But we have to make sure. You must be brave. Are you ready? Yes.
Sanchez. He was found drowned in the Thames. I think he died quite painlessly, Miss Jones. I can't believe it. Perhaps you can help us to throw some light on it. I can't now. Can't she take it, that girl? Without a whimper, too. Yeah, she's lucky, all right. For her sake, I hope you get an accident verdict. Sergeant Harris just found this, sir. It's tucked away in the bottom of the deceased's pocket. What do you got now? Looks like a bit of braille writing to me. Coming. What I'd like to know is how that cufflink got torn away. Yes, I'm coming. Sorry, Gorgon, we've had a busy night. <laughs> We're sleeping and pouring a bed in some places. Chelsea's just got in the fire. Oh, sleeping? How can anyone sleep next to that laughing jackass? <laughs> we all got our troubles, ah. Fred. <laughs> Put a sock in it, son. What's he in for? <laughs> I, I, I'm in distress. I'm in distress. <laughs> well, there's nothing to laugh about. What you been up to, murder? No. <laughs> no, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Charles was drunk and incapable. And they won't change it. <laughs> what do you want to be charged with? Highway robbery? No, I want to be charged with drunk and disorderly. <laughs> So you're on a tough spot. <laughs> there you are, my dear. Drink that. And you'll feel better. Inspector Hope can't be long now. I'll see if he's arrived. No, I don't go in for that much either. Give me a gun and a bunch of hijackers and I'm okay. Hey, wait a minute. Tell me I'm seeing things. What is that? That's one of our police women. Hey, that's beautiful. You fellas get one each, huh? Miss Jott's waiting in your room, sir. Oh, thank you. Lieutenant O'Reilly, this is Police Constable Greg. <laughs> Glad to know you, babe. You certainly gave me a shot. Lieutenant O'Reilly thought that you were here to supply love and comfort to overworked detectives. Yeah, that's me. It is my interest, Lieutenant O'Reilly, to know that my main duty lies in the promotion of public morality. Morality? What's she mean by that last crack? I'm sorry, I had to keep you waiting. Pull up a chair, O'Reilly. I need hardly say how deeply I sympathize with you. May I say at once that I know my father couldn't have committed suicide. Won't you sit down? You're sure your father wasn't worried about anything? No, I don't think so. Was he in any kind of difficulty? Not that I know of. Well, it wasn't an accident. You mean it was either suicide? Or murder. Had he any enemies? I don't know. So I'm going to find out. Did he know anybody who was blind? I think so. Not to my knowledge. Could he read the writing of the blind? Braille, I mean. Why do you ask? I don't know. Probably lead nowhere. Now, look here. I don't want you to communicate with any stranger without first letting me know. You don't think I'm in danger? I don't know what I think yet, but... I'd like you to do as I ask. Very well. Objection. Show Miss Stewart out, will you? And ask Sergeant Morse to come in. Goodbye. Bye. Your bag, Miss George. So that's why you're so interested in this case. We're not all like you. What do you mean? Oh, ask a policewoman. Well, did he fall for it? He did. Hey, what's going on around here? He's been spending the night in the cells with Grogan. Did he spill anything? 
Made a grab for me paper. What do you want? The agony column. This. G R O J U H H B I D. Hey, what is this? Ask codes what they make of this, will you? Right, sir. And I'll have Grogan up now. You want me, Ranger? No. Send up 249, please. Now, hold this is where I come in. Just leave that bird to me for a few minutes, and I'll have him talking faster than Max Miller. There's no third degree in this country, O'Reilly. We catch our crooks by kindness. You see. Ah. Uh... Listen, you can't do this to me, Alt. Take it easy, Grogan. I'm in touch to a night's rest the same as anyone else. All right, Fred. I'm going to see you're made more comfortable. Look, Hall, let me have this guy for just two minutes. Now, listen, Fred, I don't want to press this charge against you. When you go out in front of the beak in the morning, I'm not going to oppose bail. Why don't you give him a civic reception? Who's standing your bail, Grogan? Just a friend. A loving friend. Oh, you don't feel like telling me. Not when I'm going to let you out in the morning. Just put yourself in my place, Inspector. <laughs> All right, Grogan. And you won't oppose the bail? No, no, I won't oppose it. If ever I have a son, which is extremely unlikely, I'll name him Larry. Come on, Fred, back to bye-bye. There's no need to use your hands. This is no police station, it's a sanitarium. There's always tomorrow, O'Reilly. Come in. Oh, did they make anything of it? Yes, schoolboy code. Giardo, obviously Grogan, written in plain to attract his eye. The rest is simple code. The first letter in this case, G, is A. H is B, and so on. What's the message? GRO. Communicate Orloff. Orloff? Dr. Orloff. Any good? Well, I don't know. Except that Grogan's strong suit is forgery. And that piece of paper I found in Stuart's pocket was a message in Braille. Come on, St. Patrick. We'll see what the photographers have made of their end of it. Oh, Grogan's going out on bail tomorrow morning. Have him tell from the moment he leaves the court. Very good, sir. Hold me every four hours unless it's something hot. Yes, sir. Um, yes, they're just closed. Project them, will you? Uh, Mr. Porter, I'll project these. Another one in, will you? You better table of the tide. Now, the pathologist's report says that Stuart died three hours before we found him. Near high water mark at 10 o'clock. What was the time of low tide on the night of the 15th? 6.30, I thought. Then Stuart was drowned near high water mark, five and a half hours before the tide reached her. Sure, sure, but the poor Palooka was drowned, wasn't he? And there are no marks of violence. Thames water is muddy, O'Reilly. Well, don't I know it? I lost a presentation cigar case in that mud. Hello, give me extension five, will you? Dr. Wiley there? Inspector Holt. Dr. Wiley. Hello? Yes. It has just been analyzed. I've got the tube here before me. The water in the man's stomach was just clean, clear tap water. Thanks, Andy. Send up the sample, will you? Tap water, not river water. Stuart wasn't drowned in the Thames. He was drowned somewhere else and dumped there afterwards. Oh, for the love of Pete. Extension 8, please. Hello, Mr. Slade. Oh, hello, Tim. Have you had the report on the Braille writing? Oh, good. I'll come along. Oh, and Tim, order some tea, will you? Have those sent out to my office, will you? Hello, Tim. This is Lieutenant O'Reilly. Lieutenant O'Reilly, Chicago Police Department. Where's the tea? He's coming. What do you make of that braille writing? Very little. The water's obliterated the greater part. The first three letters are M-U-R. Is that all? That's all. Well, there are very few words beginning with M-U-R, and one of them is... Murder. You said it, big boy. 
Oh, keep that, Tim, and you can drink my tea. Remember, Tim, Chicago Police Department. Goodbye, Mr. O'Brien. Say, honey, you don't have to take care of my morality in the daytime, do you? Here. It's done. And you wouldn't have made me do it if I hadn't needed the money. It's not the first time you've signed a signature that wasn't your own. The first time I saw him, one of a guy what's been murdered. There is no question of murder. Oh, yes, sir. The cops are saying there is, and the papers are saying so, too. So, you won't be able to come near me over me quite so much, will you? Are you threatening me, Grogan? No, no, I'm not threatening you. Don't you worry. I won't squeal. I'm not that kind. No, you won't squeal. I'll see you there. The I'm not in the habit of breaking promises. Put your things away. out of policy, Grogan? You know Mr. Grogan, Inspector? Yes, I do. How can I help you this time? Listen, I thought you was going to lay off me. What's this man doing here? I don't understand you, Inspector. I don't like getting myself talked about, so I'll just off it home. All right, all right, let him go. In case you're not aware of it already, Dr. Orloff, I think you ought to know that Grogan's out on bail and that his speciality is forgery. Grogan, have you made a bio? Yes, I know all about Grogan, Inspector. My voluntary activities include the vice presidentship of the Prisoners' Relief Association. And Grogan was asking my help in his defense. What nerve of that guy, asking you to put up the jack for his mouthpiece. Your colleague is a foreigner. I'm not a foreigner, Doc. I'm an American. Over here for a nice little rest, and the first thing I run into is a murder. Murder? A man named Stewart found drowned in the Thames. Oh, yes. I read that. Poor Stewart. But surely it wasn't murder. You knew Stewart. Uh, not intimately, but enough to know that he was in a hopeless financial mess. I did try to help him. Was Stewart insured with your company? He was, yes. And you enter your clients alphabetically in your ledgers? <laughs> you mean you didn't see his name entered on the same list with Miss Sables? Mr. Stewart's policy is in a different category. If Stewart was in financial difficulties, how do you pay his premiums? As a matter of fact, uh, I've paid the last two for him myself. Perhaps you would like to see the policy. Will you be good enough to find Mr. Henry Stewart's life policy? Uh, by the way, I have finished this. You may return it. Who benefits by the policy? Stewart's daughter? No, Inspector. I'm the beneficiary. You see, Stuart made over the policy to me when he couldn't meet the premiums in return for the loan of 2,000 pounds. This is the policy, and this is the receipt for the loan. Suspecting a forgery, Inspector? What if I fill my pen? Uh, this is copying ink. Use this. I hope you're satisfied. I'm as satisfied as a detective ever is. Thank you. And don't hesitate to call on me whenever I can be of assistance. I won't. So long, Doc. Give me the list of the underwriters covering the Stuart policy. General and life, 9,000. 
Chapman and Under here are 5,500. Approved annuity is 5,500. Our together, 20,000 pounds. Claim on him at once. And uh, find me poor Stuart's number in the phone book. I want to communicate with his daughter. I took my girl a ramble, a ramble, down the side of the line. She called her pussy a ramble, a ramble, and by some when I think she came. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you're wearing me out. Where are we headed for now? To interview Mr. Grogan on the fascinating subject of forgery. You're working too fast. What about the murder? Grogan. 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 Oh, don't let it. Well, I'll do what you can with the poor devil. Don't say that too late, sir. Don't they ever shoot anybody in this country? Now listen now, Riley, we're on to something. We want to work fast. You mean faster. Put the line on, will you? Hello? Give me Whitehall, one, two, one, two. Quickly, please. Poor old Fred. Hello? Hello. Send a doctor around to Grogan's flat at once, please. And listen, you can take the men off his tail. He's slipped past you for good, I'm afraid. Now I want... What? When? No, don't do anything. I'm coming along now. Diana Stewart's gone around to Warlock's house. How do you know? She telephoned. That girl wants a turn, so smacking. Nice work if you can get it. Miss Stewart, I ask you to visit me, because in a way I feel a certain responsibility for your welfare. Thank you, Dr. Orloff, but there's really no need. I have a little money of my own and I shall work. What do you intend to do? First of all, find the man who killed my father. You're very determined. Wouldn't you feel the same? Of course. But don't let your sorrow dwell on your mind. Work will help to heal it. Now, I have a very dear friend. Runs a home for the blind. He himself is blind. He needs a secretary who can see to help him. Oh, I should be very grateful, Dr. Orloff. Then I will arrange it now. You're very kind. Dear boy, this is Orloff. Oh, the young lady I spoke to you about. Yes. She's very interested. Yes, yes. She's ready to commence work right away. Quite right. Yes. Goodbye. There. Thank you, Dr. Orloff. And the question of salary, you can safely leave to me. And now I'll say goodbye. My man has a taxi waiting for you. Now, don't brood on the past. Think on the future. See Miss Stewart to her taxi. Goodbye, Miss Stewart. Goodbye. Where to, Miss Rees? Bellingham Mansions, Palace Gate. Bellingham Mansions, Palace Gate.
driver, stop. You're going the wrong way. All right, Miss Stewart, I know my whereabouts. You? And the L on the back is for Larry. Didn't I tell you? And I found your office. And Dr. Orloff wanted to talk to me about Father Sir. Another man was killed tonight because he knew something about your father. And he might just as easily have been you. Oh, but that's awful. But it couldn't have made any difference to me seeing Dr. Orloff. All he wanted to do was to help. He found a job with Mr. Dearborn in the for blind men. You've got plenty of guts, haven't you? And you want to see this thing through? You know I do. Right. Now, somewhere between Orloff's office and the Dearborn place is the answer. That's all I know. Now, you go there, keep your eyes open, and keep in touch with me. I'll never be far away from you. All right. And now, where to, lady? Selling a mansion, please. I devoted my life to this work, Miss Stewart. But I cannot help these poor fellows as much as I would like to. My own blindness prevents me. Hard to believe you're blind. You move about so easily. Haven't you heard of the sixth sense of the blind? Every sorrow in the world has its compensation. Now come. Let me show you these poor fellows. men, I want to introduce Miss Stewart to you. She's going to work here and help us. Are her eyes dark, like ours? No, she can see. See. All right, men. Go back to your work. This is our little hospital. It was given us by Dr. Orloff. If anyone gets ill, he comes here and attends to them. Well, how's the patient? What's wrong with him? Nothing serious. Dan Liu is a very good musician, Miss Stewart. I should like to hear him play one day when he feels a bit better. Lie still. Lie still and rest. Come, Miss Stewart. We shouldn't disturb him anymore. Lie still heard what he said, Lou. You must lie still. Somebody's here. Who is it? I'm Inspector Holt of CID. I had an inquiry to make, so I took the liberty of coming right in. I'm at your service, Inspector. Here is a piece of paper. On it's written a message in Braille. I wonder if you were good enough to read it to me. The first letter is M. I can't tell you what the rest are. They are not decipherable. That's a pity. What is the import of the paper? They were found in the pocket of a drowned man. You distress me, Inspector. So unless you wish my help further, I will ask you to excuse me. Certainly, Mr. Dearborn. And thank you. Bring him in, sir. Thank 
Thank you. Miss Stewart, after you've prepared the paying in book for the bank tomorrow, you may go. And uh, should Dr. Orloff arrive, please tell him I am very anxious that he attends to you without delay. You are mistaken. You think the old boy was foxing? I never gave you that idea. All right, stay back. Now you see, did my injection have the desired effect? Try to find Mr. Dearborn Jay. to make another experiment. Very foolish, Lou. You have been writing on little bits of paper. The police have been here. They might come back, Lou. They might ask you questions. You're blind and you can't speak. But you can hear. And that will never do. Hello, Dr. Orloff. Good evening, Miss Stewart. Lou is all right now. I've been attending him. young lady lives, Jake. She's a difficult young woman, Jake. Perhaps you better see her safely home. It's ironic that Stuart should be carrying in his pocket a message that was to cause his own death. A message sent to a blind man from a man who could write Braille. Yes? Investigation Bureau. Henry Stewart was insured by the Greenwich Insurance Company for £20,000. Three firms under the policy for the full amount. Got him. Who? Hold on. Dr. 
Dr. Orloff. You mean that nice doctor guy? Now, listen, I've been checking up on that nice doctor guy. Doctor, I thought it was bogus, but it didn't. He'd be a practicing physician today if a megalomaniac streak hadn't got him into trouble years ago. Now he runs an insurance company. He takes out bogus policies, forges the signatures of carefully selected people, and lays off the sum of the underwriters. Yeah? He waits a reasonable time in paying the premiums, and everything is straight and above board. Then neatly bumps them off. Collects the money from the underwriters, makes a fictitious entry in his book saying the money has been paid out to persons who don't exist. Hello? Hello, Diana. Yes, I'm glad you rang. Listen. You listen. Just before I left, I had to go through Dearborn's account. And I found a check from my father that hadn't been paid in. Attached to a letter saying that Dr. Orloff was arranging for him to pay a visit to the home. Does it say when he was going? Yes, he was to go on the evening of the 15th. The evening of the night before we found him? Does it say anything else? No. What do you want me to do? Just a minute. Something's happened to the light. <coughs> Hello? from the blind home. Larry, you don't want me to go back there now, do you? I can't, I dare. Yes, you dare. I've got to have sufficient proof that Orloff's a murderer and his last victim was your father. All right, I'll do it. But you will be near, won't you? I will. I missed it. There's a fire escape out there. Still, it was good to hear the old music box again. Well, what next, Sherlock? Well, as the walrus said to the carpenter, the time has come. We'll call out the squad and surround all of office. Out of baby. I'm coming with you. You bet your life you are. All right, stay with Miss George. I'll call you if I want you. Search that room. Boy, oh boy. Well, it looks like you beat your toy. Yes. What a payoff. You won't get far. Hello, Scotland Yard. Hello, Hope speaking. Get this route for Hugh and Cry. Wanted for murder. Dr. Orloff, 48, hair graying, blue eyes. of a nationwide search, Orlop has so far managed to evade capture. Every hour reveals the magnitude of the insurance crimes he so diabolically engineered. It's incredible. This man, our benefactor, should have murdered your father. Come in. Uh, who is it? Inspector Holt. Oh, I remember. What is it this time? Lower Braille? 
No. Tell me what you know about Dr. Orloff. Dr. Orloff? As I knew him, he was one of the kindest men I ever met. He was our most generous supporter. Oh, no, he wasn't. He used you. He gave money to your institute in order to get the blind men here as dupes. Mr. Holt. I should like to see this hospital of his. I will take you there. You didn't say anything about Jake, did you? No. Don't. Holt wants to keep him on the sidelines. One of our inmates is a patient in the hospital at the moment. We shouldn't disturb it any more than we can help. I'm investigating a murder case, Mr. Diabo. Yes, I understand that. This is the man, Liu. What's the matter with him? Some uh, nerve trouble. There's a gentleman here to see you, Liu. A police inspector. He wants to speak to you. Lou. 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 Is he deaf as well as dumb and blind? No, no. He should be able to hear quite well. Who fitted this place up? Dr. Orloff. One of his many charities. And what's this? You... You have me at a disadvantage, Inspector. I, I'm not familiar with, with any object unless I handle it myself. It's an iron tank. You can run water into it. What's it for? I'm afraid only Dr. Orloff could tell you that. I have no medical knowledge. to see if he can do the man any good. Oh, by the way, have you got a machine here for the writing of Braille? Oh, yes, Inspector. I want the man Lou to answer some questions. If the poor devil can't see, hear, or speak, he can still feel. So if you'll have these transcribed into Braille, then he can write down the answers. Miss Stewart and one of the men can do it right away. I'll be seeing you later, Mr. Delvon. You ready, O'Reilly? Goodbye, Inspector. I'm pleased we can be of assistance. Thank you. Miss Stewart? Yes. Oh. Here is a list of questions to be transcribed into prayer. You can read it out and one of the men will take it down on the Stainsby machine. The machine is kept in the cupboard by the window. This is the key. Yes, for the Braille. I was just getting out the machine. Yeah. I want you to hurry, man. Faster, faster. At what time did he perform the operation? Henry Stewart's daughter. What is it, my dear? 
This belonged to my father. How did you get into this house? I don't recollect ever seeing it before. Seeing it? How could you see it, Mr. Dearborn? Blind? No more blind than I am. You're a fake, and you're shielding the man who killed my father. Since you are so interested, I'll tell you. the man who disposed of your father. And for the same reason, I must now dispose of that poor fool on the bed. Go up in my way. <coughs> no one can hear you. Stupid policeman. He stood there and asked me what the tank was used for. Now I will show you. What you going to do? You'll see. was once a warehouse, and the floor we're on now overhangs the river. Below there are mud flats which have proved most useful. Eventually the tide releases them, and the rest you will understand. In your father's case, unfortunately, he couldn't follow this procedure. Jay carried him to the river. Hold at six o'clock. If I'm missing, he'll come straight here. My dear young woman, I shall soon be sailing down the river. I have my own yacht. They'll know. The men downstairs know nothing. They're blind. Who else will be alive to tell them? Jay! River Police Emergency Call. Report Inspector Holt. Yacht anchor off the Dearborn home. River Police calling Inspector Holt. Right. Hey, what is this? We've scared him into action. Hangman, hangman, hold that rope. Make no mistake this time, Jay. Goodbye, Miss Stewart. Hey, 
stay where you are. Get on with your work. sense enough to look for my cigar case. Has he gone? Yes. He deserves no pity. When a dog goes mad, he has to be destroyed. Goodbye, kid. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, yeah, I can see that's the routine, all right. Put me down for a couple of bucks for the wedding present. Hello, morality. Okay, I'll go quietly. Quietly back to Chicago for a rest cure. 